I'm not originally German, but was coming to Germany uh, 91 from Petersburg and uh, was inviting in the generation office what called that time uh, NPS, then NPS and partners, then NPS German Force and uh, after that German Force. My name is Sergei Chobon. I'm co-founder of Chobon Force Architects in Germany and this is the Architects series. Eckhart Force and me were two younger partners. We were coming in the office uh, 1995, long time. And since 1996, I'm uh, sitting in this office, grounding uh, this uh, exactly office uh, in Berlin, that time with uh, my partner Wolfgang Nietz, who was also first responsible for Berlin office. And then I took them and uh, made this office uh, till now. And uh, since uh, six, seven years, we are calling uh, Turban Force and leading uh, this uh, office together as two long-term leading partner, founding partner. But every one of us has some very important partners on every location. We have three offices in Berlin, in Hamburg and in Dresden. And in every of these offices, we have uh, partners who are very, very important. We have here uh, five, and uh, they are responsible for the parts of projects. And my most close colleagues, I speak about every project. I speak about every idea, and with all together, of course, uh, about our policy, about uh, our new ideas of. Uh, organizing and progressing of the office. I believe even the good architecture is a drawnable architecture. So architecture you like to draw. Or if you draw some architecture, contemporary is old. By the way, to draw contemporary architecture is very, very difficult. So far, I think through drawings, but I draw also what I think, and I draw what is coming from me or not from me in the towns where I try to recognize what kind of architecture I like or I dislike. That is all going through the drawings. And even if I don't think about, it is going through the drawings. I think we are changing ourselves, of course. We are trying to go in different directions. But uh, what I think uh, is very important are, from my point of view, three directions. The direction number one, we have now very speedy growing of this office uh, town parts. And in this case, of course, you need sustainable town planning. So not too dense, not too uh, crowded, let's say, but also not too empty. And on the other side, we should ask ourselves, would all these houses stay on this place in, let's say, 40 years? If it is a completely new area, it is reasonable to think about uh, sustainability also with materials, with uh, possibly recycling, with the light buildings, with all these things. 
are very important for office buildings because our office world really changes very, very speedy. So we have to create a very changeable, very flexible structure and we have to create a structure who maybe gets new facade or maybe gets new parts of the structure. The structure could be rebuilt on some places and so on. That is a point of new areas. Another point uh, going about the areas of downtowns, large downtowns, made in the last, uh, let's say, 50 years. And in this case, we speak about houses were built not only in the time what is all heritage now, let's say 19th century, beginning of 20th century, but also we speak about houses were built in the 50s, 60s, 70s of last century, so after the Second World War. And these houses are sometimes the same as houses of 20s and 30s, uh, not from the best substance, but they have very, very important role in the uh, town memory. So we have to keep them, not only from the position of sustainability and not to demolish, and not to every time build new and press uh, CO2 in the air, but we have to not demolish them also because of our memory, what we try to keep or should keep for our towns. And the third point is also very important and going from the second one, deeply downtowns, if you have a gap there and you can build there a new house, how to build this new house in that way that this house would stay longer. Because for the density downtowns, for the middle part of our towns, we cannot speak about that in 30, 40 years this house would be demolished. However, I would say and I would expect these houses should stay much longer. So we have to speak not only about sustainability of materials, but also deeper sustainability, sustainability of uh, aging, sustainability of uh, nice aging. So the house is uh, modern today and modern tomorrow and the day after tomorrow and staying there and being not from the soul older and uglier as uh, could be expected. So that are three points and um, I try to go one of these three ways, in dependence of what kind of area I have to realize. My name is Frederik Sebastian Scholz. I'm an associated partner of Choban Foss Architects here in the Berlin office. Festival Hall in Magdeburg is a freestanding, one-story building which is located in a park-like campus of the Waldorfschule in, in Magdeburg. The Music Hall is a small construction and this small construction was created also as a, like inviting process. There was no competition. Uh, the, the, the leaders of the school heard of Sergei Choban from other architects, from architects they, which have planned for the school in, for, uh, in earlier times and they, they uh, told him about uh, Sergei Choban's work and so Sergei went to Magdeburg. I had to explain what kind of uh, music hall I like to do and how, on which way I have to work uh, with the society, with the children, with the parents, uh, with the uh, teachers. It was a very interesting process and they have chosen us for that. I was very, very glad. We made it uh, completely in timber. We are now in the working drawings. The material wood is not new for us. We have uh, designed several buildings here in wood, uh, concrete, uh, hybrid construction. But when we have been there at this campus the first time and uh, saw that they have uh, smaller buildings which are, were completely built in wood, we decided to try to make uh, this much bigger hall in a complete wood construction as well. It's a festival hall for about 550 people. It contains also a stage area for concerts and for performance. And uh, between the, the auditorium and the stage, there is a, a range uh, that could be as used as an orchestra pit. So you can play every kind of music or theater or opera work in this hall. Sustainability was very important for us and for the clients as well. So uh, we tried, uh, we, we introduced uh, 
absolutely emission-free geothermal energy for the cooling in the summer and for the heating in the winter. So we don't have any emission for heating or cooling in this building. We have an intensive green roof and every raindrop is coming is drained uh, in the park around the hall. So it's absolutely emission-free, very sustainable building. Of course, the history of West Berlin is somehow very significant for the 20th century and 21st century uh, for everything. Still, uh, after the war, a lot of parts of the town were demolished and it was very, very important to create new elements, new town uh, spaces for this West Berlin. So far, West Berlin has this small history in big history. Also small from, small from the period, but very important from the importance of this history. And uh, Ernst Reuter Platz with the university, technical university, with the buildings of uh, Dütmann, Hans Scharun, is very, very important value for West Berlin architecture. Mr. Pepper, the client, asked us uh, to take part in the competition. And I knew that the long history was before, maybe to demolish this house and build new skyscraper, bigger, the same height, or maybe to keep them, uh, them and to create a new facade. I uh, told to my uh, partners, Martin Krebes and Philip Bauer, let's do that what we see. Because I don't believe our language today, architectural language, is much more progressive as that what we see, because I love this house, I love this house every time, in the old condition. So, we had to work in budget. It is not a, a renovation of museum, as with all smallest details and endless budget, not. But that is a sample, from my point of view, for any client, you can keep your house. Of course, we have not this budget, but we have uh, enough to make nice details, and to rebuild the facade with, of course, new energetic aspects, with uh, contemporary energetic aspects, uh, with contemporary aspects what uh, is belonging to the facade quality, cleaning quality and so on of facade. But we make the building as it was, it will be. You go on and you see truly that building. We didn't demolish anything. My name is Philip Bayer. I've been working for Choban Foss since 2017 now. Well, the building in Halle, which is now used as the so-called Landgericht, which is one step of a district court in the German law system. It was erected in 1903 to 1904 and has ever been in use as a court building since then. So when we were actually asked to refurbish it in 2010, it was very easy to reuse a lot of the structure and work with very, very minor changes on the building that actually had to be made. And since the building is of a very high heritage importance to the land of uh, Saxony Anhalt, all the, the authorities that come with the heritage listing asked us to preserve as much as of the original structure and detailing and ornament and decor as possible. The modern needs, luckily for us and also luckily for the costs, didn't differ that much from the original needs. So we were able to keep the structure as it was and kind of focus on getting the right lighting in, into the rooms, refurbishing all the surfaces and reconstructing floor surfaces. Of course, for the lighting and the acoustics, a lot of things had to be added. But wherever possible, we tried to keep them well, not invisible, but integrated in continuing the ideas that were already in the building. So um, maybe, for example, for all, the, for all the cable ducts, there's a little pedestal 
just attached to the parameter walls and it got the very same foot profile as all the others so you, you barely notice it you think it's always been there and that's one of those tricks the facade wasn't reconstructed at all so what was done there is actually that all the masonry and also the the plastered parts of the facade were basically cleaned and repainted in the original colorways for all the plaster works the composition of the plaster was actually analyzed so there's no added color in those it's just dyed by natural colored soils and sands and stone parts and we managed together with the reconstructors to identify those mixtures and recreate them and then put them back on. This concerns mostly the inside courtyard of the building, which was in plaster. Um, it gives a very natural look and it blends in very nicely with all the natural stone masonry around the windows and the pedestals and, and columns that can also be found there. All of the glass panes were basically changed. The highest ceiling that faces the, the last used story to the roof was of course insulated and there had been an insulation layer from the 1970s or 80s which wasn't sufficient anymore and also um, contaminated. So that went out and the new one went in. Three Gable uh, House Zanklam uh, is a sample of new development by smaller uh, uh, scaling of uh, historical landscape. My name is Frank Focke and I'm working uh, at Turban Foss since 2001. The city government wanted to redesign the old part of the city because um, they were distorted during the post-war development from the uh, former GDR buildings. And they invited us for a pitch and we fortunately won the pitch. With our design, we looked at the parceled blocks, like in a traditional European city, and we created a kind of critical reconstruction. And so um, the return of the vertical city was how the jury named our approach when we were given an honor at the German Urban Design Award in 2020. So I think that's, that's a good description, the return of the vertical city um, with the three gable house in England. The gable design is a very hazardic feature and you can find this throughout the Baltic. Brick structures are also northern European materials. You can find all around this area. But nevertheless, as an ensemble, they appear as a unit. And um, with the parceling and the verticality, the building as a whole, in addition to the windows and to the doors, it helps to maintain the more balanced human measurements. In many ways, this project was kind of a returning point for our architectural practice. Sustainability is not only using recyclable materials or saving energy. It's um, about longevity and consistency in, in, a, in an urban context. So that was our approach. And uh, for this project, we focused on the urban renewable sustainability. But in choosing materials, uh, we emphasized using products which were durable and original. So we decided to use Ray. For each gabled selection, we used different colors of bricks. So that not only gave the building a distinct look, but also gave each of these selections its own identity because of the different structures and colors of the grid. Edge is uh, 
exactly the project we made in very new part of the town. There are many, many offices and uh, apartment projects in the same time we are erected. And that's why the idea to create uh, the structure, what is very sustainable and at the same time very ready to be reused, to be rebuilt, to be even partly recycled, like a real significant sample for the lighthouse, sustainable materials house, house with very flexible structure, with very flexible heights, with very flexible sizes, made by prefabricated materials and elements, like a model structure uh, to be created for such a parts of the town. My name is Katharina Stranz. I have been working for Schumann Foss Architekten for over 25 years. The special thing about this project is that it's a um, timber concrete hybrid building. The first and the biggest one, I think, in Berlin itself. What is really special about this timber hybrid construction is that it's really fast because everything is prefabricated. For this project, a lot of the production was actually right in Brandenburg, outside of Berlin. The walls were produced in Neuropin and Henningsdorf, and uh, the ceilings were also produced uh, partially in Brandenburg. So the transportation was also very short. This is very sustainable for this project. It is not a house uh, to be staying in the old downtown but it's a house going in the future because of combining of aesthetic, but also pragmatic values, making this house very usable as a nucleus, as an element, uh, also for the future. It's one of the first projects to be uh, on, on this internet platform called Madasta. All of the screws, all of the doors, everything that was used in that project can be located on this internet platform and so that when it's necessary it can be reused and recycled which is I think also a way to go in the future to not just like throw something away when it's not necessary anymore when tenants change or the uh, use changes but that you can like check what is actually uh, built and reuse it somewhere else. It was built like a constructor, like a house made by very different parts from very different specialists, not only architects, by structure engineers, by engineering companies, uh, as a real, like ideal structure, ideal prefabricated sustainable light structure. That's, I think, uh, uh, as a very important, of course, maybe first experience for me to create this uh, pre-sought, pre-developed in any uh, point, not only from me as an architect, but from everybody of their project society, of the planning team. Of course, I cannot prognosticate all future, but I can maybe prognosticate my interests. And my interests are still by uh, by the town is the most interesting structure uh, what the people are doing or have done in the history of architecture, the history of town. And uh, I believe that the towns will uh, stay and will stay as a big elements. I would wish to work in the towns I know not just to jump to anywhere and to, uh, to print something in any place, but just to work for the towns I know, where I can go by and see what happens, what can happen also with your architecture, or happens already with your architecture, and what kind of mistakes uh, you should avoid next time. That is uh, what I would wish as a future, that I would still be interesting for being one of architects of towns and of these parts, stages of these towns. I think the most important question uh, we are gaming all time, 
will be the occupation architect dying or not because of artificial uh, intelligence. But I think what is most important in our uh, occupation as an architect and our job is uh, speaking between people. So the role of creating of new architecture is today much more a role of being in the middle of big process as an architect, to creating discussions and uh, uh, understanding of uh, ideas coming from the very different uh, sides. I think in this role, I would, I would believe nobody uh, will work better as we. So far, I would believe and I'm sure that our architectural job is in any case forever. So don't believe it is a job for is dying, but uh, I think architectural occupation is something what will be growing. You will be just uh, have to be open uh, for any possibilities coming out, opening for your eyes, and you should be flexible and open enough to recognize them around you.